make it happen, bro. All right, it's a pleasure to see you, my man. It's your time. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I do like my job, but in terms of my passion, what I would love to do is being able to turn my art into my full-time work. Hi, how are you? <laughs> what is your name? My name is Brandon Leak. Hi, Brandon Leak. And where are you from, Brandon? I am from a small little city called Stockton, California. Stockton, California. And what do you do for a living? Uh, for a living, I, I work at a high school and a college, but I also run poetry workshops with youth in my city. Oh, well, that's wow. wonderful. Yeah. Wow. So poetry, is that, is that what you're going to be doing tonight? Yes, I'm actually the first spoken word artist that you guys are ever going to have hit the stage. So I'm super excited to bring poetry to y'all. Tell me, because uh, I don't really understand poetry, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm a great intro for you. I, I bring more about life experience, things that everyday people go through. And, and where could this lead to if you did well on the show, Brandon? Well, I have like a huge aspiration of being able to put on my own large production one-man show. Okay. So to tonight's poem, is it something you wrote? Oh, I only perform stuff that I write. Never be able to perform anything else. Well, and what is it, what is this one about? So tonight's poem is actually a, an ode to my sister. Are you close to your sister? Very much. She's here with me now. Oh, she's back, backstage? Kind of. <laughs> well, we already love you. Make us love your poem. Beautiful, I got you for that. I have two facts for you. One, I'm six feet tall. <laughs> and two, love is the most vulnerable thing one will ever have. And you must learn to hold on to it loosely so when it leaves, it won't exit so painfully. On July 14th, 1996, an angel was brought to this earth. Her name, Danielle Marie Gibson, but I only know her as Puff. Her smile is as wide as the universe. Her eyes, they glimmer like the star. She is my world and my sister. I, just four years old at the time, learned what it meant to love selflessly for on days in which my strength was but knee high. Seeing her smiling face would make my soul fly, but on March 23rd, 1997, I've been groundbound because she left Earth to go back home amongst the stars right next to God, but I was left here to manufacture wings out of tears and broken dreams, yet I'm still haunted by these nightmares because I have a really creative mind, and sometimes it designs these alternate realities where she is still here, still alive, and all the things I wish we could have done are played again and again and again, and I'm tired of playing God because I got to come to terms with the fact that my sister ain't never coming back. And that's the cost of love, caring for someone so much that you can't imagine living life without them, staring at a grave like, how about I trade my six feet for yours, but that's not real. And I know I said earlier to hold on to love loosely, so when it leaves, it won't exit so painfully. But if this pain and these memories are all that I got left of you, I won't never regret these scars from just trying to hold on to you. Wow. It is a wow. It's amazing to me that on season 15, it's the first time that we're hearing somebody of spoken word. There was something more raw in the way it's like singing and talking and just being a human a cappella. No music, no nothing, just a raw heart beating in front of us. We feel your pain, we feel your love, and you moved me to do this. They speak of a better place. They speak of kingdom. Kingdoms and how they go. They speak of freedom. Freedom and marching drums. Freedom and marching drums. You're amazing, buddy. You are so amazing. Brandon Lee! Thank you. You have received the golden buzzer from Howie Mandel.
You are going straight to the live shows. Oh, God. How do you feel right now, sir? <laughs> Man, like, ecstatic. Y'all don't even know. Like, my daughter was just born, and the only thing that I've been thinking about is like, man, I don't want time to slip by being at this nine to five while she's at home growing. Like, this is my shot. <laughs> Bando, can I have an elbow? <laughs> about to put spoken word on a map like it's never been put on a map before. That's you. Your life has changed. When I'm up here on stage, they call me Brandon. <laughs> when I'm with my homies, they call me B. And when I'm with the ladies, let's just say they call me taken because I'm already happily spoken for. But when I'm back at home, my mama, she called me Pookie. And though I'm not afraid to admit it, my mother calls me Pookie at like the most inopportune moments. For instance, today, on my way here to America's Got Talent, my mom screamed out the front door, make sure that you call me when you get there. Pookie. <laughs> and like, I get why my mother says it out of courtesy, but to be real, I don't understand why my mom's so concerned with my safety, praying for me as I leave the house on a daily, because I'm just a young man who has faith in Jesus, the same way that stars have faith that space will protect them from this galactic bully we call gravity, who longs to turn their star to a splendid spectacle for passerbyers to watch in awe of its death. So yes, I never really understood the issue. <laughs> and then I went on Facebook. And I realized that my mama loved me the same way every mother loved their son, fearfully. Because normally, death don't really bother me. I mean, I'm from Southside Stockton. I'm all too familiar with how some family reunions only ever take place on graveyard grass and how a hole can be a safe haven for a soul in this mortal game of hide-and-go-seek. But there is something so different about Ahmaud Aubrey. George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Jacob Blake, and the countless others. And as I stared at that screen, I couldn't help but think I was looking at a mirror image of myself being choked out, familiarly existing, or for daring to be more than three-fifths of what them folk thought them to be. Or maybe it was simply due to their hue, and in that moment I better understood my black mother's greatest fear was every time I leave her home on the other side of my phone will no longer be her son, will be America's next most popular hashtag accompanied by a video of her young star being gunned down by gravity as my stardust has turned splendid spectacle for pacifiers to watch in awe of my death. So yes, my mother's greatest fear is that I won't return home breathing, blood pulsing through these veins enough to still be her pookie. And my mom will warn me, son, don't you dare get caught at the wrong place, at the wrong time, with that wrong colored skin. Because those three strikes, they lead to pine box convictions. And I need you to return home my pookie again. So dear mom, I promise you this. I will do everything in my power to make it back home to you. But if I don't, just know you was the very last thing on my mind. And I will always, always be your pookie. Hey, Dad. Uh, my fifth birthday party is coming up, and this year I think I'm getting an ice cream cake. Do you like ice cream cake? <laughs> well, I'll save you a slice. Love you, Brandon. Hey, Dad. My 10th birthday party is next week, and when I woke up this morning, the first thing Mom said was, dang, you look just like your daddy. <laughs> Maybe that's why my reflection is so unfamiliar sometimes. Anyways, I, uh, <laughs> I really hope you can make it to the party this year. I miss you a lot. All right, well, I'll see you at the party, hopefully. Sincerely, Brandon. Hey, Tyrone. 
I just turned 16 years old today, and about a week ago, I thought about inviting you to my birthday party this year, because all the kids at school always ask, are you going to make it? And I always end up telling them that you're out of town. Now, Mama told me stop lying so much, but technically you are out of town, so I guess I wasn't really lying, because what's a little half-truth when you've only ever known half your roots, but I'm tired of sticking up for you. I'm tired of all these sleepless nights. I'm tired of coming up with excuses for your absence. I'm tired of trying to reform my self-image into something that you would consider to be beautiful. I'm tired of trying to earn the title of being called your son as if it wasn't my birthright. So you know what, Dad or Tyrone, whoever the hell you are, I'm done. Because all I ever wanted was for you to acknowledge my existence. But despite my persistence, I haven't even met resistance, just absence. And I hate the fact that I still want you here. But I'm done being caught in this delusion. The idea that you, a mirage, could alleviate my confusion. I don't need you. I never did. This is my last letter to you, Tyrone. Goodbye. Dear Tyrone, for 25 years I cried into pillow sheets wondering why you left me, wondering what I could have done to have earned your love or how I pushed you so far away, your absence like a flame found home in the kindling of my insecurities, and my mind became a wildfire. And as I ascended in age, my sorrow turned to rage because I wanted to move on, but I simply couldn't turn the page, or I didn't want to because somehow being angry with you still made me feel close to you. And despite our lack of history, Tyrone, I've come to learn that pain, like secrets, can only control you if you hold them within. So I've laid down these woes at the altar of Christ just so I can tell you this. I forgive you. I forgive you. I forgive you so I can finally be free. No longer shackled to my misery because This situation is so much bigger than you and me. This right here is generational healing because I'm getting married soon. And I want our first chapter together to be started off on the right page with you by my side as I marry my bride, because Tyrone, for the first time ever, I can honestly say, I love you and I actually mean it. So will you be there for my biggest day ever? Sincerely, your son, Brandon. Hello? Hey, Tyrone. I, uh, I got something I'd like to read to you. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. I listen to your mother sing this song to you every night. And the craziest part is, you ain't gonna remember any of this. All these moments we share will simply slip into the forgotten pages of the past for you, but only for you. Because I will never forget, never forget all the things that you made me feel, how I was already in love with you before I could ever hold you as your mother cradled you into existence. I prayed for you the best way I knew how, by praying for me, praying my inadequacies not become a family legacy, that these sins I carry me to cemetery before they ever become hereditary, because you scare me, because I don't want to plant grotesque seeds you'll one day have to come back to weed. What I'm saying is I never want you to be forced to pluck painful memories of me out of your psyche. I want our time spent to be God sent. So when you look back on these days, you remember how sweet the smell is. I'll never forget the day you came into this world, the hell you caused your mother. (laughs) Well, technically it was my fault you were there in the first place, but that's a biology lesson for a whole nother day. Anyway, (laughs) I'll never forget holding you in my arms for the very first time, how your presence compelled time to stand still because it knew in that moment nothing else mattered. 
how with you in my grasp, I understood what it meant to wear your heart on your sleeve, just you and I staring eye to eye, and in yours, I could see the love we shared and the safety you felt. I wonder, could you see the fear that lied behind mine, the way daddy's life was forever changed by the gift of your presence? Because the moment you entered the picture, it drew out all of my selfishness, illustrated how far I still have to go to do what I've been called to do, to move where I've been called to move. But, boo-boo, there's no more time left for fear. Only time left to build more memories, longer legacies. Aaliyah, in you, I will plant the best of me. My love, my passion, my drive, my hope, it all lies in you because, boo-boo, what you've yet to realize is so many nights as a child, I would pray for the earth in hopes that I could change it. And baby girl, you have become my world. And I know that if I can change your life for the better, that God must be real due to that answered prayer. So Aaliyah, my beautiful daughter, be you. And whatever that entails, let passion be your motor, let wisdom be your God, and your mother and I will be your biggest cheerleaders on the scene, no matter victory or defeat. Because boo-boo, this life will knock you on your behind more times than you can count. But you must get up queen, you must stand up queen, wear your crown queen, because you are so much stronger than what you think. All those nights in which these lips press prayers through them for the sake of your now and soon to come, boo-boo. You got heaven standing behind you, so who in hell can stand against you, Aaliyah? I promise to give you a childhood of splendid recollections and daddy's best protection, a prayer. Dear God, I know that you cared for my daughter before she was ever in her mother's womb, and I just pray that your largest of blessings wait in her storehouse of destiny. Because I know ain't none of us perfect, but my daughter, she's worth it. Amen. This season, thousands of hopeful acts auditioned week after week. The judges judged and you voted. We are down to your top two. Waiting for them, for one of them, is $1 million and a headline show in Las Vegas. On top of that, they get the chance to live the life they've always dreamed of. Your top two are Broken Roots and Brandon Leak. Your votes have decided the winner. Who have you at home chosen as our champion? It's time. America has voted. The winner of the $1 million and the star of the headline show in Las Vegas is... 